We can use a diploid cell with just two pairs of chromosomes to illustrate a genetics concept called independent assortment. We will track the movement during meiosis of the cell's two pairs of homologous chromosomes. Before meiosis begins, the cell synthesizes new DNA and thereby replicates each chromosome. Early in meiosis, the pairs associate. Note that the chromosomes in a pair are not quite identical. In one pair, for example, one chromosome carries a recessive allele of a gene, such as a little s, and the other carries a dominant allele, such as a big S. The two pairs line up at the cell's midplane during metaphase 1 and may adopt one of two alternative alignments. The alignments provide the basis for independent assortment. The cell may adopt alignment 1, in which the little s and the big y alleles end up in the same daughter cell. Or, the cell may adopt alignment 2, in which the little s and big y alleles end up in separate daughter cells. From a large pool of cells that initiate meiosis, on average, half of them adopt alignment 1 and the other half adopt alignment 2. During the second half of meiosis, the two cells from each alignment divide into four haploid cells. The result is an equal number of the possible genotypes. Little s, big Y. Big s, little y. Little s, little y. And big s, big y. Because there are equal numbers of genotypes, we can say that the alleles of the s and y genes assort independently during meiosis. Note that alleles of different genes always sort independently if the genes reside on different chromosomes, but not necessarily if they reside on the same chromosome.